Hi and welcome back to Pelvic News Channel, the channel for all professionals with an interest in the pelvic region. And today I will discuss a great research from our Canadian colleagues. And the topic is the efficacy of physical therapy in women with provoked vestibulodynia and compared to the application of overnight topical lidocaine. And I will start with a short introduction, but for those of you who want to go deeper into this topic, I'll put some links to other interesting information in the description down below. And then I will discuss the research methodology with the results followed by the clinical implications of the results for the pelvic physical therapist. And I will use the name pelvic physical therapist because the physical therapist that gave the therapy was specialized in this area. Symptoms of provoked vestibulodynia are pain when pressure is given at the vulvar vestibule and or during penetration. And the cause of this chronic condition is uncertain and it does not respond well to pain medication like for instance tricyclic antidepressants. And at the moment 5% lidocaine administered locally overnight is often prescribed. However, pelvic physical therapists also treat women with provoked vestibulodynia with a variety of treatment modalities like pelvic floor exercises, dilation, relaxation and education on, for instance, pain management. So why did they do the study? Up to now there was no randomized controlled trial on the effect of pelvic physical therapy for the treatment of provoked vestibulodynia. However, smaller pilot studies showed promising effects and therefore they did this randomized control trial. And the aim was to determine the efficacy of physical therapy in women with provoked vestibulodynia compared to overnight topical lidocaine. And for this study they included 212 nulliparous women aged 18 to 20, 45 who had over 6 months of pain during sexual intercourse with a pain intensity of 5 and higher on the numeric rating scale and the diagnosis should be confirmed by a gynecologist. The main exclusion criteria were having other urogynecological or vulvar pain condition, having had physical therapy or overnight lidocaine before and medical conditions that might disrupt study procedure. The protocol lasted 10 weeks for both groups Pelvic physical therapy consisted of 10 one-hour sessions and the session consisted of 20 to 25 minutes of manual therapy, desensitization, stretching, myofascial release and more, 20 minutes of pelvic floor muscle exercises to improve relaxation and education on chronic pain management and sexual functioning. The women also got a home exercise program with pelvic floor muscle contractions, use of dilators and vegetable tissue mobilization. The women in the lidocaine group had to apply 5% ointment of lidocaine on the vestibule area at bedtime and a small gouge with ointment at the vestibule area with continuous contact for 8 hours or more during the night. Those women received a weekly phone call. The primary outcome was the average pain intensity during intercourse. And secondary outcomes were measured with the McGill Nalzac pain questionnaire, the MPQ, the female sexual function index, the FSFI, the female sexual distress scale, the FSDS, satisfaction with treatment, adherence to treatment and the side effects were measured. And measurements were at baseline, directly post-treatment and six months post-treatment. So what are the results? Both groups had a significant reduction in pain. However, the physical therapy group improved significantly more than the lidocaine group, directly post-treatment and six months post-treatment. 
and both groups improved significantly for all outcomes. However, the physical therapy group showed significantly better results regarding pain intensity, quality and sexual function, and distress. And this result remained at six months post-treatment. Treatment satisfaction was significantly higher in the physical therapy group compared to the lidocaine group. And in the treatment group, six women dropped out and the other women attended all sessions. And in the treatment group, the median of the home exercise was 85% and the lidocaine group had five dropouts and a medium of 91% regarding the application of the lidocaine. There were no adverse events in the physical therapy group and in the lidocaine group, one participant had dermatitis and 15% of the participants had a minor irritating or burning sensation. So what are the clinical implications for the pelvic physical therapist? The results of this well-designed randomized controlled trial confirm that pelvic physical therapy is an important, effective treatment option for women with provoked vestibulodynia. And therefore, I think it's important that besides physicians, also women with provoked vestibulodynia should be aware of this research and the results. And this research can help physicians by referring patients with provoked vestibulodynia to a pelvic physical therapist and help physical therapists in communication with other healthcare providers on this topic. However, it's very important that the pelvic physical therapist who treats women with provoked vestibulodynia is well educated. And the women in the physical therapy group had 10 sessions of one hour each, so a total of 10 hours of therapy. And the reimbursement of 10 hours of physical therapy might be an issue. However, I think that it's very important to follow the complete protocol for an optimal evidence-based result. And this therapy for provoked vestibulodynia is given by physical therapists with experience and education regarding pelvic floor dysfunctions and pain management. In another blog, I discuss the great results of treatment of primary vaginismus with exposure therapy given by a psychologist sexologist. And of both the provoked vestibulodynia and primary vaginismus, the etiology is not well understood. However, the therapy shows a lot of similarities and I will put a link to this film in the description below. I hope you liked this video. I really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up in that case and share it with your colleagues. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel down below and hit the notification bell. And in that way, you will get a notification as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.